Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I thought I would share some simple tips and tricks that you can use to customize the items that you want to include within your mood board designs. So if you want to better help your client understand what a particular fabric is going to look like on a certain item, then keep watching. Some of the tips and tricks that I share within this video could be really helpful for you. Now in this case, I'm going to start with this bench um, and I don't want to keep the leather uh, seat cushion. So I'm actually going to cover that with a blue fabric and I'm going to include some white piping. Now in order to do that, what I first need to do is find that fabric swatch that I'm going to use. So you can go onto Google images or any of your preferred um, vendors and grab a paint swatch or not a paint swatch, a fabric swatch that you're going to use, save it to your design files library, and then you can drag it out onto your design board. Now in this case, because I'm dealing with a solid fabric, I'm actually going to scale this fabric swatch up to the full width of the bench. If I was dealing with a pattern fabric, I wouldn't do that. I would do this in bits and pieces and I would only scale up the fabric swatch to the point where the pattern is going to be realistic. And then I would just kind of um, duplicate that and make my way across this bench. But in this case, since we're dealing with just a blue fabric, I'm going to scale it to the full length. I'm going to use the crop tool and I'm just going to pull this down to just a small section here. So I just have a thin band of blue fabric. We're going to apply that. Now this is going to be the side profile for the seat cushion. So now that I've got that, I'm going to take another blue fabric swatch here and we'll just shift this down a bit. I'm going to line it up with the top edge. We're going to scale this one up as well. And now that I've got that in place, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the distort tool and I'm going to pull these corners down to create the top portion of my seat cushion here. And I'm just using the old bench as my guide or the old seat as my guide. Okay. So that's roughly in place here. So once you have that in place, you can hit apply. Now for me, this looks a little bit flat. So one of the things that you could do here is you could click on the side profile, go into the image adjustment tools, go to the brightness and take it down to maybe 60%. So we're going to darken this edge. So it looks like we've got a little bit more depth here. Now I wanted to add some white piping to this. So as a kind of quick trick that you could use is to go into the paint color library, just grab any paint swatch, and then you can scale that up. Um, to the full width of the item, just like I did before. If you were dealing with a, if you wanted to create piping that had a pattern on it, then you would just use the fabric swatch that you're planning on using. But in my case, I'll use the paint swatch. I'm going to crop this and we're just going to bring this down to as far as we can. You're not going to be able to get a thin line. So we're just going to bring it down to as far as we can. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to line it up. Okay. And I'm going to zoom right into the edges here so I can really see what's happening. Well, I'll even close down this panel so that I can get this as big as possible. Okay. So now what I want to do here is I'm going to use the distort tool and I'm going to pull this corner up just, it's going to be slightly over top of the uh, original point at the top here like that. And then we can apply this and I'll just slide that up. And if I zoom back out, now we've got this bench customized in a blue fabric with some white piping. And if I wanted to be able to shift this around and put it wherever I want, I can always select all of the individual pieces. So I'll select the piping, the side profile, the top profile and the bench, group it all together. And then I can shift and scale this all at once. Now, a couple other things that you could do. There's different ways that you can approach customizing your products. So let's slide over here for a second. In this case, I basically took two products from the product library within design files and I grouped them together so that I could create my own custom look. So if you like the idea of the using this particular, um, bench frame, but you wanted to change out the, the look of the overall cushion or the seat on it, here's what I did. I'm just going to select this. So if I, I'll zoom into this as well so you can see what I've been doing. Okay. So in this case, there's the bench 
uh, frame that I've used down here. So if I go into the background removal tool, you're going to be able to see that I literally just traced out the bench frame just so I have that and excluded the cushion. And then I basically took this piece and in this case, I just cropped off the legs off of that one. And then I slid the two pieces together so that I could create this look. Now, when I do that, another thing that you can consider here is obviously with the original fabric, it was more of a cream color. So it, if you wanted to kind of tweak the color a little bit, you can use the image adjustment tools as well. You can increase the brightness. So I could, I could change this down to make it a darker finish or I can brighten it up. Um, in this case, I also took all the saturation out. So it was originally more like this. So I just pulled the saturation back so that I could get more of a gray tone. And then when I'm changing up my brightness, I'll be able to go from like a dark black to a charcoal gray further up into a white. So there's just little things that you can do where you can start tweaking things to get closer to the look that you're going for. Um, and the image adjustment tool will come in really handy for that. Now, one last thing, let's say that you wanted to use a coffee table like this, but you didn't want the marble finish on the top, or if you wanted the marble finish, you wanted a darker finish or something else. So another thing that you can do here is you could take the original image, you can duplicate it, and then what you can do is you can just kind of crop out the sections that you want to customize. So you can use the manual tracing tool, or you could use the crop tools if it's more of a just kind of a square or a circle that you're going to be uh, cropping out and that'll be quick and easy for you. So I'm just kind of adjusting this line until I have just the marble finish. We'll apply that. Now that's giving me a separate tabletop. So again, I could go into the image adjustment tools and I could take the um, brightness right out of this. So I have more of a darker marble finish and then I could layer that on top to show my uh, client what this would look like with a dark uh, tabletop finish. Um, you can definitely play around with brightness, saturation as much as you like. Or another thing that you can consider is, let's say you wanted to put a wood finish on top of this. You could go into the library and you could find, you know, another round dining table or coffee table that has a wood finish. You could crop down to just that section and layer that on top of the product so that you can change up the overall finish for the tabletop. So yeah, just a few kind of tips, tricks that you can use if you're wanting to just customize a few of the items within your mood board designs. Um, let me know if these tips were helpful to you. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, just feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.